I just wanted to thank the lovely Andre here on YouTube who I followed for a very, very long time. Um, she is honestly like such a fabulous woman and I would love to be her <laughs> when I'm older. So um, kudos to Andre, but she started this tag and I, when I saw the video and I saw like the topic and I'm like, mm, this is really interesting. So her tag video is, are YouTubers narcissists? And I thought that was really, really interesting. The term narcissism has been thrown around a lot recently. Like I see it thrown around on social media, on TikTok, on, well, that's also social media, but amongst people, when I talk to them, people will say, oh, you know, he's so narcissistic. Oh, what he, what she said was so narcissistic. Oh, they're, they're such narcissists. And I'm like, okay, like I have a general idea of what um, narcissism means or refers to, but I'm like, am I missing something? Because, you know, what I heard of it, it's narcissist. It's according to like Greek mythology of somebody being so vain and obsessed with their own looks. That's what I heard of, but what does the DSM say? Apparently there's a narcissistic personality disorder and I'm like, okay. So basically um, it's about it's somebody who is self-centered. So they're constantly thinking about themselves and their own needs. And you know, they don't pay attention to the needs of others. Um, they have a sense of entitlement or that they're superior. So they will constantly say that they're always right. Um, they feel that they're better or deserve better than other people. They have a lack of empathy for others. Um, and they're very manipulative and controlling. So they use emotions to manipulate other people. Um, they have a tendency to be extremely jealous and controlling in relationships. Uh, they have a strong need for admiration. So they demand praise all the time. They want to be the center of attention. They like to be the center of attention and they get very upset and bothered when they are not the center of attention. Um, they have a very difficult time accepting feedback. So they get very, very over reactive, they get very defensive, and they have a hard time admitting that they are wrong. Um, and they're also easily wounded. They're very quick to feel angry and insulted, and they all constantly feel like they're wronged by others. So that is the definition of a narcissist. And I was like, okay, like that's a little, you know, if you, if you put it that way, then it's like, okay, I don't think being a YouTuber is narcissistic, but I think what Andre means is, is that like you like being in the spotlight. And I don't think anybody doesn't like to be in the spotlight. A lot of people like to be in the spotlight and it's very rare for somebody to not want to be in good light, okay? So it's one thing to be in the spotlight, but then be judged by others, but it's one thing to be in good light where everybody praises you. And I don't think anybody would object to that. I think with social media, like Instagram, and TikTok, which is very up and coming now, I think it's turned everybody into a bit of a narcissist. I mean, we all get this reward when people like our photos or posts or like our videos or like our TikTok videos and comment and praise us. It gives us, it gives us a boost. So I think that's kind of the reason why people share a lot because um, they, they like getting that praise and feedback and that's totally okay, but this is, you know, a video talking about like YouTubers, people who are talking at a screen. So like right now I'm having a good conversation, but there's no one in the room. I'm talking to the camera and I feel as though I'm having a conversation with you, but the structure of the conversation is not a typical conversation. So I'm talking to nobody right now. I mean, I'm talking to you guys, but at this present moment, the art of conversation is very messed up. I'm talking to a camera and conveying my thoughts. There's no one right now here to receive and perceive what I'm saying and no one to reflect their feedback to me in real time, okay? So it's a little tough. I mean, if you're starting off making videos, it's a little bit tough, it's a little bit awkward because you're just talking in thin air. Like you're not getting any, you know, words of agreement. You're not getting somebody to say, uh-huh, mm-hmm, you're right. Or adding in, you know, little points here and there. So when you're doing this, it takes a bit of practice to keep the conversation going because otherwise you get kind of stuck and that can happen. So I think with social media, we do have a narcissistic element in all of us. So I wanted to do YouTube for a really long time. I've been following the luxury community for a really long time on YouTube. You know, it started off with watching like makeup tutorials and I remember people telling me that I should do makeup tutorials and 
um, you know, like this is not ideal. I mean, yeah, it's a little, I don't wear as much, but like, you know, when I get dressed up for parties, I do my hair and I do my makeup and a lot of people said, wow, like you should really do makeup tutorials. And I never really was into that because I was like, oh, it seems kind of vulnerable, you know, being on a uh, screen like that. But I have experience with public speaking. I've spoke at a variety of conferences, presentations that I've done. I even have experience being on local TV. So for health, uh, you know, I am a, I'm a doctor, so I do do segments on TV. So I did have experience talking in front of a camera and it is something that is quite natural to me. I I'm a big communicator. I talk every day to complete strangers. So I had no issues with you know, talking on on camera, okay, is what I'm trying to say. But when I came to YouTube, I was a little bit shy, okay, I'll just say that. And the internet is huge, right? And you don't know who's watching, really, right? So it's, it's a bit nerve-wracking. And even with television, like, you don't know who's watching. There's stuff up on YouTube from you know, TV that's posted and I don't know who's watching what, when, right? But, um, you know, I, it was more about time, I guess, and, and skills. So I'll just get into why I started YouTube to begin with. So I started YouTube last year in June, so it hasn't been a year yet and the growth has been tremendous. Like I really, really love it and I enjoy it and it's part of my hobbies. So I guess the first reason why I wanted to do this was because when I was off. I was off during the original lockdown, so you know a lot of stuff was closed. I wasn't practicing uh, for a good three months uh, until we got the recommendations and health guidelines in. But I was like, you know what? I want to do videos. Like I want to do videos for patients, health videos, and I always wanted to do my own um, so that I can edit them and I can you know take my time. I can put in graphics and animations and all that. So I have a very helpful resource for patients to look at and I did film videos before and I would send them to patients but nothing that was super professional I didn't know anything about editing so I wanted to learn how to do that and uh, it really I had no motivation before to to learn it because I just didn't have the time or I just life was busy and I just didn't take interest in it and I found that it was hard the technology the technological aspect was hard for me because it was very foreign so when I was off I'm like you know what I want to learn how to do this and I guess as a practice run, I'm like, why don't I do YouTube videos on the luxury fashion? I've always wanted to do this. And the reason why I didn't want to was because I was afraid of who was watching. Because there are certain things that you wanna share with a select group of people, and there are certain people who you don't want to share this side with. And I was talking to my husband about it, and he's like, who cares? Like, it really doesn't matter Like, who watches. So that really motivated me and I put up my first video and the feedback was great and I was meeting people, people would recognize me outside, you know, when I was walking in the city and, you know, I had a few people come up to me and I'm like, oh my gosh, Art, did you do YouTube? Even today I was uh, in Toronto, I was in one of the boutiques there and I was standing in line and this um, woman was next to me and she's like, do you do YouTube? And I'm like, oh my gosh, like she recognized me even though I had a mask on. So. Um, the feedback was great. So I figured, why don't I just do a trial of videos and um, my editing has come a long way, I think, okay? And around content that is very laid back, okay? So if you're doing like a health video, you, you do have to be a bit more, um, I guess a, you have to do a lot more research for it, I guess, and make sure that what you're conveying is correct. So it takes a little bit more time and effort to put that content together, but I'm like, you know what, why don't I just practice with content that I enjoy and won't won't really take a lot of effort, I guess. And boy was I wrong, it does take effort, but um, I was like, you know what, this is just something fun and I wouldn't have to stress about it. I can just show, you know, items and I can review items and then that will give me something, some material to work with when I'm editing. And that forced me because I had an interest for it, I was motivated to do it, and it motivated me to learn about all these video editing hacks and you know, learning about equipment and getting lighting and all that, right? So that's the number one reason. And I have filmed some health videos, but they don't get as much of a good response as these videos do, but I do want to get like a proper setup for those particular videos because I don't think I'd be doing those videos in like my bedroom, okay? like. 
I'll do it in like more of a different area of like the clinic or the office or something like that and um, stick around for that. Maybe I'll include that link in the future, okay? Uh, the second reason was I wanted to connect with others. COVID was a time where we were um, more isolated than normal and at the same time, uh, when you're when you're older, it's harder to make new friends and you know, it's, yeah, it is harder to make new friends. So, uh, especially people who like the luxury side of things, right? That, you know, actually have an interest towards fashion and luxury fashion. It's, you know, you don't meet those people just like that, at least in my, you know, immediate family or in my social circle. I don't really know many people that like luxury handbags and fashion and all that. So it was a way for me to connect with others and before the way I was connecting with others was through the Facebook group. So there are Facebook groups where people are focused on buying and selling and some Facebook groups do allow you to chit chat about all things luxury, right? There's, there will be discussion points or people would share what they bought and all that and then everybody would comment. Um, but there, you know, there, some are very strict where you're only posting about what you're selling. So. I really liked those groups, but most of them were in the States. There weren't really much in Canada and I wanted to have an outlet where I can actually talk and put a face to the comments that I was making. So that's one of the reasons why I started this channel. It's really nice because you know you can share these items with an audience that has a general interest in this sort of stuff and not get a lot of judgment for it. So the people who are searching for these videos actually have an, a genuine interest in luxury fashion. So you know it's not like you know it's not like a bunch of women showing off on YouTube. It's sharing, right? So we share things and you know you guys enjoy them and uh, you know sometimes you might learn a thing or two from reviews or people might you know get some uh, background as to what's available for certain collections. So there is something in it for everybody, but I also wanted to connect with other creators that I've watched because I've been watching them for the last couple of years and I feel like I've developed a connection with them, but I was just a commenter So I wanted to make videos so that we kind of have more of a personable interaction and the great thing is is that I have met virtually uh, other people who are on Instagram, who are on YouTube, who are um, similar age group, uh, you know, so like also uh, some of them are professionals. Uh, everyone is very intelligent and I've connected with them over Instagram, over DMs and we chit chat and we talk and, you know, not just about like luxury. So it's been really great to just make new friends. Number three is that it's more of like a hobby. Like this is a hobby for me. I'm not doing anything else. Like, yeah, you know, you do your regular things that you do every day for work and your chores and all that you gotta do. But um, this is something like we're not, we're not going out as much. Like we're not uh, going on vacation. We're not, you know, going out every week or anything like that. It's a hobby and it's a pastime. And it, I, I do get quite a bit of enjoyment. It's like a creative outlet, like editing and, you know, putting together content as a creative outlet so I would say it's more of a hobby for me it's not a job I'm not um, a, a, an influencer like or a big-time influencer I know people who do this as a profession and that's totally fine and I highly respect and can understand with the video editing and creating content that is a lot of work and my videos are not by any means high-tech but some of the content that these big influencers put out, um, I can tell that a lot of work goes into it, a lot of planning, um, especially when they're doing like brand deals, they really have to answer to those brands. So it's a full-time job for these people. So I can to totally now understand that this is their career and that's totally fine. Um, I don't need YouTube to make money. Uh, yes, there are, my videos are monetized. Um, and on average from AdSense, I'll make like 300 bucks Canadian a month. That's on average since I started. So I don't anticipate it going very, very high because I have heard other YouTubers that would talk about how much they make on YouTube just from AdSense. Those are the ads that you see in the videos. But majority of the money is from brand deals and stuff like that. So, or affiliate links, which I don't even know how to put affiliate links in my videos. So that's how people make money. But this is just like pocket change, I guess, in a way that it makes and it's not something that I'm doing it for. I also wanted to create a platform, a luxury channel 
with a Canadian context, okay? I don't know a whole lot of Canadian luxury YouTubers. I know some are up and coming and those are the people that I've met and we're just kind of starting out, but I mostly were, was watching people uh, who were from the UK or from the States and that's it. And there wasn't really anybody in Canada. Now, if you have a Canadian context, you can talk about um, you know, shipping and duties and all that that we have to experience here, pricing, our stock that we have here, um, most importantly, luxury fashion that is weather appropriate. So I'm in the Toronto area and it is not nearly as cold and frigid as other parts of the country, but it can get kind of nasty here in the winter with the snow and the ice and the salt everywhere and sometimes it's not practical to wear some of these luxury items so i've always wanted to look to other canadian um, influencers uh, and look at what their recommendations were to wear and look chic in our given climate uh, also being in the context of uh, a professional so how do you make these things work for your lifestyle and just to show people that you could be a professional and still like this sort of stuff right like it's okay to like luxury things and i've met people who are in the healthcare field who are you know doctors who are surgeons who are um, also lawyers and are dentists and you know despite their careers and despite them wearing scrubs all day that they like this stuff and it's nice to see that it's nice to share that i've also received comments that you know they appreciate seeing a visible minority which is kind of nice and it's nice to see visible minorities in the luxury sphere um and you know there aren't too many but i'm glad to be part one of them um especially uh being of an indian background i was born and raised in canada but my family is from punjab india so uh i don't think we have a whole lot of uh people from punjab doing these videos we have quite a few people who do makeup tutorials and who are influencers on instagram but not in this luxury space so um you know I, that's that's really nice to hear that people uh saw that there was uh, a gap in the sphere and i'm happy to fill that gap i also wanted to share my knowledge and tips so especially with reviews uh there are some things that you know about certain luxury items clothing bags that you know i've used for a number of years and i wanted to share my tips and reviews and experience with other people so they can learn from it so yeah, to say that you know YouTubers are narcissistic, I don't know, it's, it's a bit of a tricky question. It depends on what you're um, here for, but I think everybody who does put themselves out there via YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, if you're putting out posts, that we all have a narcissistic element and it's okay. It's okay to, I think everybody has their own priorities at heart before others. I mean, it's very hard to find people who are totally selfless. Everybody is a bit selfish and everybody is a bit self-absorbed. We have our own needs and priorities at the forefront before other people, so um, that is totally fine. But uh, I can see how some can be totally self-absorbed um, and totally uh, ignorant uh, and oblivious to their surroundings and I can see that but yeah no I wouldn't say that youtubers are narcissistic um, yes there are some people that constantly post themselves online for self-validation because they constantly need that praise and they need people to tell them that you know they're they're good and you know and everything is fine and dandy all the time so yeah I guess the to figure out if a social media personality or a celebrity or a youtuber is a true narcissist and i think that you have to see them outside of how they are on video like you'd have to see how they treat other people i think that's really important so that's the you know the other side of narcissism is not just being self-absorbed but just seeing how they treat other people and that would be a true narcissist i think i treat people pretty well <laughs> right um and uh yeah like doing youtube i'll say so i'll say this i had a bit of a hesitation of growing my channel because i was afraid that certain people would see it that i wouldn't want them to see i mean i always wondered about this like people who are on youtube and i'm like well 
do would people from their work like find them on YouTube and because they're always talking about well you shouldn't wear luxury to work and all that but I'm like but what if your co-workers or your boss like found you on YouTube um, where I work they know I do YouTube so it's totally fine and they you know sometimes they'll say oh I watched your video and I'm like oh cool right? <laughs> um, but uh, I, I, I think like yeah I don't want to be I don't want to be like famous because that comes with certain drawbacks and you know you don't want to be recognized everywhere you go so I think that's a long time coming like I'm a very small fish in this YouTube world so I don't think that's gonna happen for a very long time but if I continue to do this but yeah I think assessing whether a youtuber is a true narcissist is to see how they treat others outside of YouTube and off-camera um, and I guess that's something that we just may never know. Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's tag video. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And also, always feel free to drop questions in the comment section here. People DM me on Instagram with questions and that's fine. But do try to de like do try to write those questions in the comment section because there are people who watch the YouTube videos who aren't on Instagram. So uh, if there's anything that you want me to cover, any questions that you have, feel free to message me on Instagram or put them in the comment section. And then what, at one point, I'll compile some of those relevant questions into a discussion video. And I hope that's enjoyable for you guys. Okay, guys, I will see you in my next video. Bye.